Ahoy, my friends, Ryder here, and welcome back to another Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis video. The new patch day has just dropped, and today I'm going to be giving you guys all the content info for all the notices, news, and everything that has just dropped into the game. So we got a new Final Fantasy IX banner, there's a new shop up, so I'm going to be checking out everything, checking out the mission campaigns, checking out the new Final Fantasy IX Waltz additional event information. So that being said, let's get into it. I'm going to jump over to the notices over here and just kind of go through these one at a time. Uh, I did not do a news update on Monday just because I felt that the these two notices were just so small that it didn't really warrant a video. But I will uh, go over them really quickly right now. The first one is regarding the ongoing issue with purchasing products. So it does look like this issue has been resolved for any of you guys. I didn't even notice uh, any issue with that, but it does look like there was an issue there. The second one here is the version 1.15 update notice right here. It does look like uh, some guild battle issues have been resolved. So the guild battle additional equipment screen power. The issue in which the guild battle formation screen when using auto formation such as recommended party. Uh, the effects of additional equipment were not reflected in the total power displayed will be resolved. So essentially your boosted power rating that you get from having all those additional equipments um, is going to now affect your total combat power score. Uh, I wish they would have fixed the mock to live kind of issue going on over that, but it is what it is. It's nice to see that fixed. Uh, it does look like weapon boost ability potency. The issue in which effects of the additional equipment boost ability potency were reflected in the healing effects, resulting in a higher recovery amount was will be resolved. All right, so I guess this is still unresolved. The status of resolutions for other known issues will be added to the known issues notice as they become available. We apologize for the inconvenience. Um, it does look like event preparation, reduced memory load during battle. Okay, this is an interesting one, actually. The degree to which memory load is reduced during battle has been adjusted depending on the game environment settings. So in layman's terms, essentially, you can now reduce your lag in the game by changing the actual game environment settings, which I think that it did not do before. By reducing memory load further than the traditional low setting, we have improved it to reduce, reduce the risk of crashes. The closer the setting is to low mode, the less memory load there will be during battle. So for those of you guys out there with slower Wi-Fi, you can change it, put, set it to as low as possible, and hopefully this will help alleviate some of the pain of having lag in these tough kind of you know shared server matches. Uh, the degree of memory load reduction will vary depending on the type of device used and usage conditions, and they will continue to investigate uh crashed uh, that occur crashes i'm guessing they mean crashes that occur while using the app and make any necessary modifications as necessary all right now let's get on to the new stuff um i'm gonna skip the apple australia store age rating increase it went from 12 to 15 no idea why um all right so as many of you guys know, the new guild battle, Guild War number two, is here, focusing physical wind weapons. I'm pretty excited to get into this. Uh, last time it was pretty long five days, but I think that we're all better prepared going into this next Guild War. So I wish all of you guys the best of luck out there, and I hope that everyone has a lot of fun and doesn't get too stressed out trying to, you know coordinate this entire thing that it is all right so uh the period so let's go over the period is going to be august 21st to august 27th all right event daily missions will be held from august 22nd so that will be tomorrow night um the tallying period will be the 27th of august to the 28th and the results will be on august 28th to august 31st all right I'm guessing that most of you guys know how to play, but guild battles can be attempted three times per day. Um, yada, yada, yada. Use additional equipment and boost ability potency. Most of the time, two characters are focused where they get more of a boost when you use their weapons. Last time it was Glenn and Sephiroth. I'm not sure who it is this time. Um, let's go through here. Strategy and mock battles. The mock and the live battles are still different, unfortunately, but hopefully they said that they would fix it by the third Guild War, so I'm really looking forward to that. That's going to save everyone a lot of time. 
All right, and it looks like we will get a bunch of rewards. One of the best things about Guild Wars is a ton of the rewards. We can get some of these weapons, and I'm not going to lie. This dragon looks freaking awesome. I love that it has, like, freaking antlers coming out of its head, and it looks really cool. I would have loved to have Zack's Beatrix sword. It is what it is. It looks so cool, but for those of you guys that do have it, have fun. Um, the wind element is effective against the earth dragon. When the force gauge rock armor used by the boss is full, it grants physical defense up, magic defense up, wind resistance up with rock armor. So we will be needing an imperil for sure. The physical attack mighty chomp grants the boss increased physical attack. All right, this is going to be where Kate Sith's new weapon comes into play. The boss has a wind weakness, so it is recommended to equip wind element abilities. It also uses a powerful physical attack, so physical attack down is also effective. In addition, by setting additional equipment and increasing ability potency, even more damage can be inflicted. All right, so I will put out a video once we have more information on this boss and try to give you guys as much information as I can. Uh, but just give me a day or two just to wrap my head around the event and what exactly is going to be needed going into this. All right, so that being said, let's jump into the next part of the event, which is the second part of the Final Fantasy IX crossover reawakened a resonant waltz updated. All right, so hopefully we get some cool stuff. Uh, as of October 21st, da 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 da, a newly added Glen exclusive weapon, Steiner's Blade, which was in the original one, can now be obtained. Um, these days I feel like the event weapons are becoming less and less useful. I feel like they were more useful towards the beginning of the game, but as the game progresses, especially if you're in harder content, I find myself rarely using the event weapons for sub weapons. And so I hope that, you know, in the future, they start to kind of boost these a little bit more. All right, so new rewards. Rewards added to the event exchange. We got some Mithril Wars. We got some Synth Catalyst. Glenn is featured. He's got some weapon parts. There's the Steiner's Blade right here. All right, that is all they're going to show, but I will go and check it out. Now, here is the notice of the day, the Final Fantasy IX crossover draw. All right, so I'm just going to quickly go through this, and we'll go check it out. Unfortunately, the Kuja's Spirit Blade did not get a buff, which I feel like... I'm a bit let down. I wish it would have got a buff. The R abilities definitely could have had work. I mean, they could have had this go, even for just the super whales that went for this, they could have had it go high on the first cast at OB10. I would never get there, but I think it would have been cool to see it get something. Um, but I think that, you know, people are pulling on it based on its merit anyway. But I think at this point in time in the game, these, this, uh, these mechanics can be performed by other weapons, so I think hold off. The Garnet's Rod, however, did get an increase. It now drastically increases magic attack off a single ally with ATB 3 instead of ATB 4. So it only what's underlined was changed here. So it loses an ATB cost in order to drastically increase magic attack. Do I think that that changes anything when it comes to this banner? No, I do not. I think that everyone at this point in time in the game should be saving for the anniversary, exclusively for the anniversary. Uh, I will talk a little bit about Kate's weapon and I will put up a to pull or not to pull on this banner. It'll be my next video where I'll kind of go more in depth on Kate Sith's weapon, but let's take a look at it right here. So this is the new crossover limited weapon. It is the Kena Megaphone. I'm not gonna lie, I this was such a good opportunity to give a, a Kena costume. I wish that we would have gotten one. The fact that we've gotten two weapons in a row back to back weeks without costumes is disheartening for me personally to say the least and i really 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 hope that this does not continue in the future i don't think that this is a good way for the game to be going um but it does look like the final fantasy 9 kind of crossover was something that they it does seem like they kind of put it together at the last minute so i can see why they wouldn't be able to make costumes but I would have loved to see the Kina costume. I mean, like, or Kuina. I don't know how you would say that. Kuina, Kina. Anyways, all right. So let's look at the actual megaphone right here. Four ATB cost, comforting cuisine. It drastically increases all allies' physical attack and restores up to seven percent of the caster's healing potency. 
Plus, drastically increases all allies' physical defense when the caster's HP is 70% or more. Ooh, 70% or more. So it's not 50%. That's a little bit of a stringent requirement there. Um, it's already kind of difficult sometimes working with the 50% threshold, but 70% is even more tough. Uh, but this is essentially a Commodore wand in the form of a megaphone for Kate Sith. So I'm going to wait to kind of talk about this a little bit when I go check it out here in a little bit. But let's take a look at the gear, what was improved. So it does look like uh, for Aerith, the HP was boosted from 10 points to 15, but the healing potency stays the same. Kuja's attire boosts HP from 10 to 15 points, along with boost magic ability uh, potency from 10 to 15 points as well. So both costumes did get a upgrade, which is nice to see, especially for those that already have them. All right. There is a new draw right here, Guild Battle 5 Star Weapon Guaranteed on now. Alright, so it looks like these are the weapons that are focused in this Guild Battle. That's interesting, the Bandage Sword is here. I believe we just read that we need physical defense up, right? Uh, so unless the boss is ice-based, because I know that this sword has uh, ice ability damage, or ice, ability, ice resistance on it, I'm not exactly sure. Maybe this isn't really focusing weapons like they had that EX2 Ramu banner, which made no sense. But <laughs> Alright, so as of August 21st, the Guild Battle 5-star weapon guarantee draws on now. It does look like only cloud-exclusive weapons appear. One or more 5-star weapons guaranteed. Interesting choice, considering I feel like cloud won't make the team composition for this guild war. He doesn't have a strong wind weapon. Yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> it doesn't really make sense. It does look like there's also a Lucia one, so maybe Lucia will make the cut for the for the good teams here. But I can't say as of yet. All right, and the last thing right here, the Guild Battle Campaign is on now. All right, so clear missions to get a total of Blue Crystal times 1,500. Do you guys remember when we used to get missions that would give us Blue Crystals times 9,000? We haven't seen one of those in a long time. But for those of you guys that that haven't been here there has been a campaign to get blue crystals times 9,000. that did happen in the past so hopefully we get something like that for the one year anniversary all right so guild battle login bonus login during the period to get cloud weapon guarantee draw tickets and lucia weapon guarantee draw tickets all right but that looks like that is all all right so from here i'm gonna jump over to the shop let's take a look at the new shop maybe there's something interesting we have these daily crossover packs with the premium 10 tickets and the 10 stamina potions. When there is a new event out, guys, and you go through the new levels, it will unlock new packs. It will always unlock a 2K paid for 10 premium tickets, right? Which is a better deal because you can essentially buy 300 stamina potions for 300 paid in the shop. So technically you're paying 500 for 10 here, which is a bit more. Um, however, the nice thing about this one is that it does kind of carry like if you buy it one day you can get it the next day etc there is another 300 paid this is kind of cool that they've been doing recently where you get two five star gotcha tickets for 300 paid and a 10 uh regular gotcha tickets i think that's a great deal there's another one of these epic bundles in here uh for the 3k paid comes with a weapon voucher five star gotcha ticket a final fantasy 7 slash crisis core guaranteed ticket and a first soldier ticket plus 10 regular gotcha tickets honestly the bundles have improved which is good to see at least some of these bundles um it looks like everything else here is more or less the same there is this one for 300 paid but i don't i don't recommend paying to upgrade your high wind it's just something it's a marathon thing and it, it'll get maxed out no matter what as long as you're playing the game other than that let's look at who's paired together we have cloud and Aerith again always a great pair tifa and kate sith not as strong and zach and sephiroth which is almost as strong as cloud and Aerith, if not equivalently as strong but other than that we have just all the the regular occasional things here now let's go over to the missions and check out the campaigns, guys, and see what we got. All right, join a guild, 300 crystals. I will take that. All right, and it does look like we have a bunch of different things so that are going to be pretty easy to clear. But keep in mind, these are guild battle campaigns. They end in five days, so you're going to want to get to this as quickly as possible. Sometimes we have 20 days or more, so five days is not very long. 
Clear premium quest up to three times, six times. That'll be done in two days. And then consume up to 300 stamina. That's easy. And then log into a guild for three days. Send a message in guild chat. All right, so don't forget to do this one, guys. Attempt an official match in guild ranking one time, two times, three times, and six times. All right, so it does look like we will get that 1,500 crystals right there and some nice little weapon map rewards as well. All right, so that's going to basically conclude everything. I'm just going to take a quick look at this new uh, Kate Sith weapon over here, guys. So let's go in here. Let's check out the Kate Sith weapon. And let's see what's going on with this thing. All right, so we'll take a look at it. Base 5 star, level 120. All right, so physical attack is increased. Range all allies, which is great. Base 5 star, it will go to high, which is basically the same as Komoda, I believe, yeah. Also, magic healing is cast. Potency, 5% of healing potency. And when HP is 70% or more... Ooh, that 70% is tough. I'm not going to lie. Uh, physical defense is increased. It also goes from mid to high on the first cast. So even having one version of this weapon will be pretty solid. Whether it's worth going for it or not is another story. Um, and I'll talk about that a little bit more. It might be worth doing one pull to try and get a three or four star version and then dropping Kate Sith weapon parts on it. You know, kind of doing that old hack just because... I think for me, Kate Sith is a character that I don't really focus as much, so using the weapon parts to get something like this might be worth it. However, the problem with only having one weapon like this is that you don't really get the great R abilities, right? Having a base 5 star version, even at level 120, you get 40 attack, which is good, but having attack on a main character that's doing buffing and probably not doing damage is not great so this leads me to believe that this is going to be a much stronger sub weapon um unless you can level this up pretty high right to like ob6 or higher now let's take a look at the support material with physical wind ability damage plus 20 percent oh no physical ability damage 20 percent wind ability damage 30 percent and circle sigil boost all right so that's pretty interesting all right but i feel like the boss is x sigil this time around i could be wrong um now let's look at the r abilities and see where they go so at ob6 we have attack going to 54 meaning this is going to be a 62 stat buff debuff extension not very high though all right so let's look at this at ob10 it's going to have 609 physical attack 62 regular attack but only 26 buff debuff extension all right which is gonna be in i mean if you run it in the main hand it'll be good but other than that 13 points um yeah so that's gonna be kina's megaphone i'm gonna have to kind of sit on it and really think about it but that will be in the next video to come to pull or not to pull but that being said i hope you guys enjoyed this video today the content overview of what just dropped in the game i wish all of the guilds in the game all of you guys the best of luck with the guild war and also best of luck to the 13 curseborn alliance guilds everyone got in the top 100 last time and i hope you guys just have fun and do your best this time around that being said i hope you all have a wonderful night take care and peace